I'm with the Doherty cheerleaders, and they would like to say, What the Welcome to week 10 of the Blitz. I'm Joey Lamar. And I'm Matthew Doyle. We are nearing the end of the regular season, which means it's almost playoff time. And a team that's primed for a playoff spot is Deerfield Windsor. They are applying for a playoff spot, but this could be a potential trap game for them because they have Valwood next week, next week, and that could be a de facto region championship game. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's hear from both coaches about this week's matchup. They're much more physical than they were last year. They Defensively, they're really hitting people. And uh, right now, it's just we want to go out and try to execute and not turn the ball over, and hopefully uh, things go our way. Hey, Deerfield's a good team. You know, we I had them picked early in the season to probably be the you know, number one team in the state, and we feel that about them. They're, they're real strong. and uh, But I'm very proud of our kids. We've gotten stronger. They've played a lot more physical, played a lot harder for us this year, and, and they've really improved. It's our Harvey's game of the week, and again, some were concerned this could be a trap game for the Knights looking ahead to Valwood next week. First quarter, they answered that question. Cameron McCook plows into the end zone, 7 to nothing. Deerfield. And later in the first, the fumble, Ruski fooling everybody. Howell Logan is going to drop his shoulder on not one, but two defenders for the score. Knights up 14 to nothing still in the first. So Terrell Ives should look in the pass, but Cameron McCook pulls down the quarterback for a loss. He's the nominee for our player of the week. And on the very next play, more defense from the Knights. It's the trifecta, the sack, force fumble, and the recovery for the score. Deerfield all over Till Academy tonight, 38-7. This is setting up a de facto region championship game next week against Valwood. And Cora Joyner upset that Westover is up 13 to nothing over Doherty late in the second quarter. And the Trojans punting from the end zone, and it is blocked. The Patriots swarm the ball carrier, and it's a safety to make it 15 to nothing over Westover. And when they got the ball back, they're going to go right to the air. Emma McKenzie going deep to Trevante Brown, just overshoots his man, but... A few plays later, McKenzie, this time he's in rhythm and hits Casey Wilson for the completion down to the 14-yard line. And later in the drive, it's McKenzie on the keeper. He's going to take it down to the 6-yard line, and that would set up this. With eight seconds left in the half, a, three, a field goal for the Patriots. And as Ivan hits it, it's 18 nothing over Westover at halftime, the final 25-0 over Doherty. And Fitzgerald was looking to bounce back tonight from their first loss of the season as they traveled to Pelham, a team they've shut out in the past two seasons. And the Hornets were trying to snap that streak at home tonight, taking the field against the Purple Hurricanes. And on third and long for Fitzgerald, Josh Relliford back to pass. It's tipped and picked off by Judas Wilson. First and goal, Pelham. And on Hurricane defense isn't letting anyone cross that goal line. Fourth and goal, James Fackler rolls out, lost a pass to Enzo, but it's not down by Antonio Perry. Hornets turn the ball over on downs. Nets fell in possession. Fackler back to pass, and it's Perry with the interception. He goes all the way for the pitch six. Fitzgerald up 7-0. to zero. On the Nets, Hurricanes possession, they give it to J.D. Keene. He finds some daylight, and he is streaking down the sideline before finally being pushed out of bounds. That sets up first and goal for Fitzgerald. And a couple plays later, give it to Keen again. He's in the end zone for six. 14-0 Fitzgerald at that point. They go on to win 35-14. And homecoming tonight at Sherwood Christian taking on Creekside in a bad start for Sherwood Christian. After a three and out, Derek Cotton and his teammate get a hand on the punt. Block ricochets into the back of the end zone for a safety. Cooters up 2-0, and they get the ball back. And Bennett Joyner makes them pay. On second down, the running back takes it 31 yards and full speed ahead into the end zone. Failed two-point conversion, and it's 8-0. Next street side possession. The Cooters find Shane Thompson on the sideline, and the tight end makes some men miss. Takes it all the way to the six-yard line, and Cameron Green does the rest. Touchdown and a two-point conversion makes it 16-0 at that point. Creekside goes on to win 59-0. And don't go anywhere. We'll name our team of the week and take a look at the playoff structure for Class Single A. All of that and more after the break.
welcome back to the Blitz. Toots started their season 1-2 overall, but since then, they have put together five straight wins and are 4-1 and one in region play, and that is why they are the team of the week for week 10. In Bobby Jones' first year at the helm, Cook has continued to have success as with six wins, they will finish above 500 for the seventh straight year. This week, they'll face a tough region opponent in Dodge County, who Coach Jones acknowledged at the beginning of the year as one of the teams going for the region title. We have Pierce County, Applin County, uh, Dodge County, all very good football programs, and uh, we're going to have to compete with them. Uh, very well coached, and it's going to be uh, tough for us to come back and uh, defend our region championship. And let's see if Cook can beat the undefeated Dodge County Indians. Hornets and Dodge County are tied at seven at the start of the second half, and in the third quarter, it's the same deal. Indians are driving, and Clint Thompson throws up a pass to Cameron Young. Somehow, he comes down with it, and Kyle Glover, on the later on from the two-yard line, punches it in to put Dodge up 14-7. And on the next possession, Cook with the ball, so Darius Arnold fights, fights his way to the sideline breaks some tackles, cuts back to the center of the field, then races to the complete opposite side before finally being taken down. And on that same drive on fourth down, Connor Hilliard tries to run for the first but is swarmed by the Indian defense. And at the start of the fourth quarter, score still 14-7, and Chris Kinsey fights his way into the end zone to make it 14 all at that point. Dodge County stays undefeated, though. They win 21-14. And we're heading to Indian Territory where Wilcox County looking to get their first road win of the year against Irwin County where it is homecoming night. Wilcox County on the opening drive in the first quarter. Shaquan Murphy gets to the outside and he is racing into the end zone but a penalty brings it all the way back. And on that same drive, Wilcox goes to the air. Tycorian Hunland finds Marquise Love with the deep pass gives them a first down and more, but later on in that drive, Hunlin lobs a pass to Antoine Benjamin for the score. Two point, no good, 6-0, Patriots. Same score, same score, Irwin with the ball. Zat Toller rolls out to the outside, heaves a long pass to a wide open William Lewis, who goes in for the touchdown. 7-6 Indians at that point, they go on to win big time, 43-12. And as we continue our blitz coverage, Fox, 30 on, Fox 31 owns Jarvis Robinson is in Americas as the Panthers take, take on Worth County and Southland host tipped area. Jarvis? Joy, I can tell you it was definitely an interesting time here in Americas tonight. Now Southland Academy and America Sumter were both at home and they seemed to struggle. Tonight we start at Harvey Simpson Stadium. Tipped area kicks off to Southland. They pick it up and make a couple of defenders miss. So great starting field possession for Southland. Now Southland trying to get fancy, maybe a little too fancy. The flea kickers drop, then they try to go deep, but tipped area Spence Massey intercepts it and he's tackled out of bounds. So tipped area will take over on offense. Big turnover created by tipped area. But Tipped Area is looking to capitalize off the mistake. Later in the first, still no score in this one. Tipped Area is driving, looking to pass, but there's nothing open. He attempts to run, but fumbles. Southland recovers and also picks up the win over Tipped Area. Down the street at the neighbors, things aren't so pretty either. Top of the second quarter, Worth County's leading. America Sumter's driving the ball is handed off to Eric Brown. A positive gain before being forced out of bounds. Same drive, America Sumter's quarterback pump fakes a pass and tries to pull it down the center, but it's dropped for a loss. America Sumter still driving, this time it's another pass. However, it goes out of bounds. The air attack not kind to Panthers. Later in the second quarter, Worth County Rams have the ball. Dentavious Buford is taking it down the field full speed. America Sumter's Darian Tyson catches up to him. Same drive, Worth passes to Buford, who's in the end zone and catches for a touchdown. Worth County catches another region win. Joy, now I can tell you the energy here at America Sumter tonight was absolutely bananas, but that wasn't enough for the home team. That leaves Worth County Rams as the lead 
55 to 18 for the final score. Reporting live for the Blitz, I'm Jarvis Robertson, Fox 31 Sports. All right, thanks Jarvis. With the season winding down, the playoff picture starts to take shape. But not every GHSA classification receives the same number of teams in the state playoff. Fox 31 Sports looks at how Class Single A determines its state champion. You know, Class A with the power ranking system kind of makes it impossible to make the playoffs if you're not a region champ. 16 teams make the playoffs in Class Single A Public and Single A Private, with each region champion receiving an automatic berth. Region champions are guaranteed a top eight seed and a home playoff game, but their seed is determined by their power ranking. A committee determines the remaining eight wild card berths based on their power ranking as well. At least the GHSA tries to handle it. You know, they may not make everybody happy, but at least they're trying to make some people happy. Coach Noble says the GHSA has a tough job. Irwin County's coach notes his experience in public and private schools as why the current system works. Last year was the first year going into the playoffs that I felt like I was just like everybody else. In every other classification, 32 teams make the playoffs, but in single A, only the region champion is guaranteed a spot. In theory, a region could have only one representative and another three or four. And teams from the same region are not protected from meeting in the first round of the state playoffs which is what happened to Mitchell County's Larry Cornelius last year. But the fourth-year head coach of the Eagles says he has a solution. I think every classification should be the same. You know, I, I think if, if you're going to have 2A through 6A, the top four in the region get in the playoffs, I think it should be the same way in the single A. And with two-year classification coming up, the GHSA has already stated that they will move to 24 teams next season for the postseason. But as you heard, some coaches still don't feel that that's enough. And don't go anywhere because we still have more to come from the Blitz as it, it, as it is a season-defining game for Monroe and Turner County is trying to keep pace in the Region 2 single-A standings. Stick around. Welcome back to the Blitz. The last time that Chris County beat Thomas County Central was in 2000, and tonight the Cougars hosted TCC in a region battle. And with the clock winding down till kickoff, the captains take the field for the coin toss. And in the first quarter, is Chris County's ball. Quarterback Josh Powell steps back to the pass and finds junior wide receiver Damius Ward for the catch over the Yellow Jackets defender. Cougars up 7 0 early after that touchdown. Second quarter, Thomas County Central wants the answer, and Kalias Williams cuts his way into the end zone. PAT is good, and the game is all tied up at 7. Still in the second, the Cougars looking to extend the lead. Patrick Felton finds tight end Will Carter on the run. He is pushed out of bounds in the score. Still tied at 7 and yards away from the end zone. Felton hits Snoop Troop. And he falls in for the touchdown. Cooters back up 14-7 late in the second. TCC has the ball. Running back Nick Patterson breaks wide for a great run. He is brought down near the 50 in the Yellow Jackets ball. Dominic Scott looks down the field to Quintavious Cooksey with the great catch over the Cooters. Score is tied at 14 and a half. Thomas County Central wins a thriller 28-21. And Cairo looking to stay undefeated in region play as they took on Monroe tonight, beginning of the second quarter, 13-6. Driving is Cairo, and Dexter Mormon passes to Carter Christian and is hit hard after a short game, forces a third down, and on third and long, Mormon back to pass. Looking deep for Monroe's Ulysses Williams, but he is double covered and the pass is long. Monroe punts, Cairo driving, John Owens back to pass, goes deep to a wide open Walter Grant, but the pass is too long, Cairo punts. Once again, and on Monroe, fourth and long at midfield, bad snap, recovers the fumble in great position for the Surrey Makers. A couple plays later, Owens passes deep to DJ Donaldson in the quarter end zone. That's a touchdown, 13 to 12 Monroe, and Cairo going for two. Owens on the keeper, finds the end zone for the conversion. 14 to 13 Cairo, but Monroe wins this one, 16 to 14. And headed in tonight's contest, a look at the Region 2 single-A standings revealed a four-way tie atop. That means with just three games left, nothing is even close to being decided. It was homecoming tonight in Ashburn, the Rebels taking on Atkinson County. 
First quarter, Turner already up eight to nothing. Kyler Moore is going up top. The completion set up Turner County around the 10 yard line. And two plays after the pass completion, Demetrius Smith goes in for the touchdown. Huge hole open by the offensive line there. 15 to nothing Rebels. But it wasn't all good for the Rebels. Still in the first quarter, they put the ball on the ground. Najee Wilson on the recovery. But Atkinson could not turn that turnover into points. Second quarter, Turner looking for the knockout blow. Moore through the air again. This time, DeAndre Pierce 21 to nothing at this point. Turner County with an easy night. They remain a tie to top the Region 2 single A standings with a win. And with all these great games, we haven't forgotten about the people who really make Friday night special, the fans. So now, let's take a look at our Albany Technical College Fan of the Week. We start with the Purple Hur Hurricane Band rocking out tonight. It's always more fun when you're winning, and at Sherwood Christian, it was homecoming, and the spirit chain was on display, and at Turner County, these fans were excited to see Turner play Atkinson. Be sure to log on to WFXL.com to vote each week. And be sure to stick around because we are going to reveal our Terrell Seat Player of the Week as well as our Colquitt Regional Medical Center Player of the Week. Stick around. Welcome back to the Blitz. There have been a lot of great plays tonight, but I think we found our Terrell C play of the week. And it comes from our Harvey's game of the week. And it was the fumble Ruski by Deerfield Winslow. Howell Logan powering over two defenders for the touchdown. Knights rolled in this game to pick up the win. And here's a look at the Colgate Regional Medical Center Player of the Week nominees. We start again from our Game of the Week. Cameron McCook with a touchdown on the opening drive and then a sack later in Deerfield's win. And from Westover and Doherty, Travion Riles blocks the punt, which leads to the safety. Huge for their momentous win. And in the final game, coming from Turner County, with the huge touchdown, go online and vote for your favorite players. And looking ahead to next week, Tiff County will seek their first win in the region as they face the number one team in the state, Colquitt County, and Albany will host Cairo looking for their first win of the season. Brooks County will take on Thomasville, and Pelham will hit the road to Seminole County. Westwood will try to beat one of the top teams in the region, Brookwood, and Memorial Day will travel to Southland. Tithere Academy will, and Terrell Academy will battle it out, while Mitchell County will host Calhoun County, Randolph Clay, and Terrell County. Should be a good battle out of Region 1A, Wilcox County, traveling to Turner County. And on Thursday, Monroe will host Chris County. And Saturday, Doherty hosts America Sumter. Both games will be at Hugh Mills Stadium. And a look at our Harvey's Game of the Week nominees. We start in GISA, Deerfield Windsor taking on Valwood. That's the de facto region championship game we talked about earlier. And Camden County and Lee County and Valdosta Lounge in 6A. And Worth County at Thomas County Central in 4H. All should be good matchups. Matt, which matchup are you looking forward to most? You know, I don't think there's a more important game next week than Deerfield Windsor oh, yeah. hosting Valwood, who did win tonight. So it's definitely going to be that game who determines who wins the region. And I'm, I think it should be a good one. All right. I'm really excited about that game. But the game I'm excited about is Lee and Camden. Both teams were off last week. They both uh, come off a lot. Well, Lee comes off back-to-back -back losses. How will they respond? Is Can Dean Fabrizio coach of the boys? He's a great coach. Yeah. And we got to see how they respond against Camden County, who is one of the best teams in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for joining us on The Blitz. Have a great weekend.